of Central Florida, you're listening to the most electrifying show in media. A Neighbor's Choice. I'm your host, your neighbor, David Gronoski. So glad to be with you again for another journey through news headlines outside of the DC Group Think Matrix. We're going to roll up our sleeves and solve problems neighbor to neighbor. Joining me now to talk about some of the biggest problems we have is our reckless foreign policy and the repercussions that we're going to feel for a long time with the latest scams, the latest lies that have led us into this proxy war in Ukraine. We have with us uh, a retired veteran of the CIA, Larry C. Johnson. How you doing, sir? Hey, David. How are you? I'm doing well. I I wanted to have you on. Of course, you're in the Tampa Bay area, and you have a uh, a, a widely read blog for foreign policy uh, folks and other topics called Sonar21.com. First of all, I wanted to ask you, where's the term Sonar21 come from? stands for Son of the New American Revolution. Very good. So, so te- I, yeah, I want to know a little bit about that. Think, We've, I don't think I've asked yeah, about I am, that. I'm a registered member of the Sons of the American Revolution. They go by SAR. And uh, I think the very same principles that I had 28 ancestors that fought in the American Revolution in one form or another. Uh, at least one was uh, killed in the process. Um, so I think my heritage is applicable to today because I think we need a new American revolution to set this country back on its right course. What would that look like? Uh, it would start with dismantling a lot of the federal bureaucracy. Uh, it would eliminate things like the Department of Education. Uh, it would break up the FBI. It would shut down the CIA and start over. Uh, where you eliminate this covert action capability, which has led us astray uh, so many times. It would be a dramatic reduction in the Department of Defense, where we'd actually create a military designed to defend the American borders. Uh, right now, our borders are wide open. We're being subverted, not just by illegal but by a flood of uh, illegal drugs and narcotics that are killing in one year We've had more people die from drug overdoses from these illegal narcotics uh, than uh, died in the Vietnam. In fact, two times as many died from the drug overdose in one year than died in the entire our, our 20 year involvement in Vietnam, in the Vietnam War. Yet we build a monument. People go weep at the monument that records for the deaths of uh, 58,000 Americans. And we've got twice that number almost dying every year, and it's getting worse, and nobody cares. So we need to get uh, get ourselves straightened out. This is uh, this has got to stop. Yeah, you recently on your blog, uh, you talked, you had a a post by Bob Bishop uh, about a firsthand account on third world invasion of America. Yes. And what yeah, did Bob's he's a friend and. Bob lives down in uh, San Antonio, I believe. And uh, what, what they're experiencing is just, uh, it's a nightmare. You, you know, there were uh, last year 2.3 million illegal immigrants flooded across the border. In Donald Trump's last year in office in 2020, the number was 480,000, I believe. I mean, he was trying to stop it. Democrats are opposing it. Joe Biden's first year in office, 2021, the number was 2.1 million. And then this last year, 2022, it goes up to 2.3 million. That's almost 5 million people. I know that that's, that's bigger than, than Kansas City, Missouri, uh, in, in the metropolitan area I grew up in. I think that that's bigger than Atlanta. That's, uh, you know, I think that's more than the population of Manhattan. Uh, in New York City. So it's just, these are phenomenal numbers. And the people that are coming in, they're not educated. They're not competent to uh, work in work in factories or teach or take technical jobs. It is, it's really, it's just heading towards the destruction of this country. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at some of the pictures here. Talks about uh, 
at Eagle Pass, Texas, they found the riverbanks littered with clothes, shoes, backpacks, pharmaceutical pack packets. Uh, they've got in, to treat infections, malaria, diabetes. I mean, and you look at it, it's just trash all over the place. And they're taking photos on their smartphones to celebrate uh, to relatives back home that they're over there. Uh, you said it, the, the post talks about uh, most of them are young military age men. And, uh, you know, it, it's not, you know, it, it, who's funding this? I want to know who's fun, who funds this besides yeah. the United States government enticing it. Um, it would not surprise me. If one of the countries we have a view as foreign adversaries like China or Russia in, in their own national security interests, feeling that the U.S. is a threat, would help fund this to weaken the United States. Yeah. But, but even if they were funding it, they couldn't get away with it if our own officials would simply enforce the law. It's the failure here to enforce the law rather than to try to blame some outside force for creating it. Because if you enforce the law, and if people knew, no, you're not getting in, and you're getting turned around, and you're not getting a free cell phone. I mean, just think about what he writes. How can people who have been traveling across, you know, walking, it's not like they're driving in a car with, a, with an electrical charger in the car to charge up their, uh, their smartphone, and yet, after they cross a river, they got enough juice from the smartphone to you know, take a selfie and shoot a photo off to... Uh, the senorita or senora back home? Come on. Just doesn't make sense. What do you think there's... Why are they so hell-bent on, on mass migrating millions of people from countries with no uh, advanced skills or anything to, or no desire to assimilate to the American cult, culture? Uh, well, I think, I think uh, like a couple of uh, possibilities. One... Uh, they want to dump them in these, uh, particularly in areas like Texas that are currently red, but also uh, to, to try to undermine the Republican control uh, and then also put them into areas, blue states that are losing population in order to boost the numbers so that come the next census, uh, the, the Democrats will not lose more congressional seats to the Republicans because the way the immigration numbers are going, people are flocking out of Massachusetts and New York and Illinois and, and coming to places like Florida and in, uh, the, uh, Texas and uh, Tennessee. Yeah, and yet, yet the Republican Party has been very much on board with this as well. What's in it for them? They don't mind being the designated losers? Well, you've got it's, it's, it's free illegal labor. You have a lot of chicken farms, uh, uh, pig farms, turkey farms uh, that uh, uh, need workers but that you don't have to pay health care, you don't have to pay minimum wage. And a lot of times they'll live in just the most uh, disgusting circumstances, but it's, it's not much different from what they lived, you know, how they lived back in Central America. I mean, I know I lived, I lived out in the, uh, in the country, in the Campo in Honduras back in 1978. And, uh, you know, we had a two-hole outhouse and what we called running water was when you'd get a bucket in your hand from the well and run back to the house. That was your running water. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, these people come out of really some pretty stark uh, circumstances like living living out on the prairie in the 19th century in the West. Uh, so they get up here and they, they can, you know, they can endure some pretty d difficult conditions. And there are, you know, frankly, some Republican businesses and businessmen and women that are profiting off of this, and they're happy to do so. So there, you know, this is there, there's a there's a definite financial angle here. And yet, you know, our government is spending billions and billions and billions of dollars right now to very much monitor what exactly is going on on the border of Ukraine and Russia, and yeah. that kind of shifts our focus to one of your other posts uh, recently on Sonar21.com about. Facts on the ground in Ukraine force a shift in the media narrative. But first of all, it makes me wonder, why is there so much, you know, if you really want to see what the government's priority is, look at what they are willing to create. All of these photo ops and Congress uh, having the, you know, Ukrainian president speak, they really prioritize Ukraine's uh, uh, 
uh, sovereignty over our own. It makes you wonder why. Yes. Yeah, well, when you look at the reality of that we spent over a hundred billion dollars or allocated at least a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine in the last 11 months. That is like 14 percent of our total defense budget. Our defense budget is $850 billion. That's that's more money than we spent in Afghanistan, I believe, in five or six years. So it's an enormous amount of money, and it's been it's literally being poured down a rat hole. Uh, what the, the I don't know if you heard the today the, the not only the uh, interior minister, so let's call it like the head of the FBI, only uh, is like the secret police. Well, the FBI is acting like a secret police. The head of the, the FBI, the SBU as they call it in Ukraine. His deputy, and then the guy who was like the police chief of Ukraine, they were all killed in a helicopter accident, so-called helicopter accident. One of the one of the things I'm hearing is that in fact the head of the SBU had discovered that senior military officers were diverting a lot of the aid that was being sent by the United States and U- in Britain and diverting it to the black market, selling and, and, and profiting off of it. So the head of the SBU, instead of arresting him, he he demanded that he get his cut. And <laughs> it looks like the military didn't want to share. They shot him down. Uh, the, the eyewitnesses report that there was a fireball in the sky. So this was not a mechanical failure. This was not pilot error. It is most likely this was an assassination of some top-level Ukrainians uh, from by their own by their own people, by, but it's army versus uh, the secret police. And it's yeah, just, think- this is one more sign of this, this thing starting to unravel in Ukraine. So, you know, you, you, that's what you've just said about the story, but just a few minutes ago, the New York Times has the story, helicopter crash in Ukraine kills at least 14, including cabinet official, and they say, Here's what we know. It was not immediately clear what caused the helicopter crash near a kindergarten, but there were no initial signs that it had been shot down. So what, how is their story so different from what you're hearing? (laughs) Because they're lying. You know, they're not listening to other, there are eyewitness reports. They saw a fireball. Well, if you know anything about how aircraft are brought down, if it's a mechanical failure, a mechanical failure is not going to cause a fireball. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just uh, right off the bat there. You realize that um, um, that uh, th- this was likely a hit, and the irony will be if they were shot down with one of those American javelins that have been circulating on the black market over there. Very, very easy to do. Uh, you know, it's also possible that the you know maybe the Russians shot them down. You know, because. Why would you get all of these guys? This wasn't just the head of the SBU. I mean, it was the top leadership of this whole group. And so, uh, you, you know, there are at least four very uh, four major players in the internal intelligence activities of uh, Ukraine. So, um, you know, that makes you think that where were they going? Who knew where they were going? Uh, you know, the... the, the I, I think it's I think it's highly likely, very probable that they were they were shot down. And it makes you wonder, of course, if there's folks deviating, you know, taking that loot, the billions of dollars that America gives, and taking it for themselves, while they're arresting people and sending them to the meat grinder, the front lines, to forcibly be slaughtered in a no-win conflict. What does that say about the folks? who are running Ukraine's government. They don't seem to have the biggest level of patriotism and care for the people's goodwill there and their their interests. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, just to give you some more details, that, uh, so the Minister the minister of Interior, Internal Affairs, Denis Monastersky, and his deputy, Evgeny Ennin. So you got the number one, just think of this, it would be the number one and two guy at the FBI got killed. You think yeah. that's a big deal? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's, oh, you know, two guys died, helicopter crash. No big deal. I mean, come on. This is, <laughs> it's just, 
it's just a you know further example of how much our media is lying to try to downplay the reality of what's transpiring right now uh, in uh, in Ukraine. The United States is losing a war to Russia. That's what's happening. And in saying that, I'm not trying to suggest that we need to be there fighting Russia. Just to the contrary, we don't. But uh, this is going to be a tremendous setback for the United States and destroy its credibility with, uh, with you know, places like uh, within NATO. I think this will ultimately, uh, put, uh, you know, potentially at least lead to uh, the weakening, if not the breakup of NATO. Is there any possibility you see that America could get directly involved further than what they've already done? Oh, sure. Yeah, we could put... Uh, we could start putting our own crews to try to operate pistol, uh, Patriot missile batteries. Um, we could try to send some American advisors like we did in the Vietnam War to be on the front lines with Ukrainian troops. And all that's going to do is going to get them killed. Uh, the United States has not fought an army like Russia's since the Nazi, uh, the Wehrmacht of World War II. Right. Um, you know that we haven't, and we've we've gotten away with you know the, uh, the we, we had trouble with the with the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. You know we had five hundred thousand troops there at one point, and yeah, we killed a lot of them, but we didn't win. You know we did not impose a peace. We did not make that country uh, conform to our model and, and our interests just the opposite we got run out <laughs> so yeah i just it, at some point america has just got to stop lying to itself about you know we we keep looking in the mirror thinking oh mirror mirror on the wall we're the fairest of them all and we're not uh we've got you know very expensive ineffective weapon systems we've got a bloated pentagon and we have a shrinking army and a shrinking navy go figure how is it that you continue to increase your defense budget, and yet the size of the Army, the size of the Marine Corps, the size of the Air Force, the size of the Navy are shrinking? <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. you, you know, uh, I, the average voter needs to just sort of, uh, um, you know, throw open the window like the, in that movie Network and say, you know, we're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, it's really it, it, it's it's going to lead to the destruction of this republic if we don't turn it around. How will it lead to the destruction of the republic? In what way? Well, number one, it's going to bankrupt us. Uh, number two, it's going to, um, to lead. Right now, what's happening is the U.S. influence over the past. You know, we've dominated the post World War II era with the U.S. dollar as the leading international currency. That's gone. That is now in the process of disappearing. Yes, the U.S. dollar is still strong, although I don't know if you saw it today. The, 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 the dollar weakened dramatically. What, what that means is that the, in, instead of a strong dollar with people having to pay more of their own currency to buy our dollars, they're, having, they're paying less of their currency for them. So paying less rubles to buy U.S. dollars. Well, what that means is now – they, by paying less rubles to buy U.S. dollars, that means that the supply of dollars is increasing. You know, so when you got a uh, an oversupply of something, the price of it can go down. And then when commodities get priced uh, in dollars, some of those commodities that are here in the United States, uh, they may end up going down, and people will be, you know, snapping them up, you know, agricultural products. So it's just uh, our economic foundation is being destroyed. From from just an educational standpoint, consider this the statistic. Uh, 7% of all of our college students right now are majoring in engineering or engineering students. Of that 7%, probably 40% are Chinese or Indian. In Russia, 25% of their college students are engineers. Yeah. So, they, they dwarf. And what does that mean to us practically? Well, the Russians have produced a functioning hypersonic missile. 
deployed two of them that, that are currently operating. The United States doesn't anticipate having a functioning hypersonic missile until maybe the end of this year or first of next year. But we've that's produced hypersensitive one. people to pronouns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'm going to steal that line, David. That's <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, we we can't do hypersonic missiles, but by God, we can do hypersensitive people. That's what we're good at. Yeah. Um, when when you look at it in terms of what are is re- what's our real economy, our ability to produce, to build things, to make things that work, especially modern technology, we've outsourced that uh, most of it to overseas. So right now, the United States, which at one point through its NASA program built and through contractors built the rockets, which carried our astronauts to the International Space Station, that's that stopped in 2004 under George W. Bush. And since then, so now we're looking at uh, uh, almost 19 years, it has been the Russians that carry our astronauts to the space station, or more recently, Elon Musk of South Africa uh, right. got into the act. But but the United States on its own can't do that anymore and is not doing that. Uh, we have trouble getting computer chips for vehicles. So a lot, of, a lot of car lots have been empty of new vehicles simply because they don't have the computer chips to put in them. So when, when, when you look across the board with, with our education, but particularly in the inner cities, the uh, the minority populations that inhabit the inner cities uh, are basically they get the high school without the ability to read or do basic math, mm. except the ones who are working the color on the corners as as drug dealers, you know, or selling narcotics. They've got to be able to add and subtract, or else they're going to wind up dead. Because if mm. you don't know how to make change for twenty when you're buying a uh, a bag of cocaine or some methamphetamine or some fentanyl, you, you know. The guys that are giving you that to sell, they're going to they're gonna kill you. So right. there's at least an incentive for the criminal element to get some education just so that they can make money on the street. But we're seeing levels of drug use, levels of homelessness, and refusal to enforce laws in cities across the United States, but particularly in Democrat areas, in Chicago, in Los Angeles, in New York, in Philadelphia. And that's going to come back to haunt us. Well, very good. It's always great hearing your thoughts, Larry, and uh, we'll want to continue to follow your work at Sonar21.com. Thanks again for joining us. Hey, David, thank you for having me.